Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be doing the follow-up video um, which I did in collaboration uh, with Ben, my friend who uh, uh, is a huge, huge Star Wars collector but also um, is a sketch artist for Topps Star Wars trading cards amongst other things. So um, uh, basically Ben asked me 10 questions or so and I answered them and I put that out as a video. I also asked Ben a few questions about his uh, collecting history and career and he's now answered those and that's what this video is going to be and it's absolutely fascinating. So this goes through uh, Ben's early time as a collector growing up, uh, being a fan of Star Wars but then getting that amazing uh, sort of phone call and the introduction to uh, working on top trading cards amongst lots of other things as well. So uh, that is the subject of today's video. So this is my little introduction. Ben's video is about to follow. Just go over and give his channel a bit of love because uh, there's some really, really good stuff on there and it, I just find it fascinating. So see you soon. Bye. What's going on guys? This is Ben from Kansas Geek Man and I just want to take a minute and just say there are aspects of social media I love and probably the biggest thing I love is the opportunity to actually meet people who have common interests, people that you would never have an opportunity to meet except for social media. One of those people I met uh, through Instagram is Jules Burt and uh, he and I have been friends on uh, Instagram probably for the past four years or so. And uh, we met uh, on his account at uh, Vintage Star Wars A Day and on my account, KS Geek Man or Kansas Geek Man on Instagram. And uh, he has a YouTube channel. And one of the things that we decided we'd give, we'd try is that we would try to ask questions of each other and, uh, and post a video giving our answers. So I had the opportunity to ask Jules some questions and he answered them over on his uh, channel. So I got his questions and this is the video. So sit back and enjoy. And if you've got any uh, comments, please let me know. Thanks so much. Okay, Ben, then. So did you actually watch any of the original Star Wars films at the cinema at the time of release? Oh, that's a great question. Now, I know answering this, I'm dating myself and I'm actually okay with that. So uh, when the film was released in 1977, the original one, I saw it when I was three years old and I saw each um, film after that, 1970, or 1977, then 1980, Empire Strikes Back, and then 1983, Return of the Jedi. I saw all three originally in the movie theater at the time. And uh, I'm sharing images here from uh, the movie theaters that I actually saw, uh, both Star Wars and New Hope, which was back then, it was only known as Star Wars, and then The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Um, so yeah, I was I was there, and I remember uh, coming out of the movie theater and instantly seeing a, a domed trash can as a kid, and just identifying that as R two D two. So yeah, I've uh, I've been a fan since the original release. So what Star Wars merchandise did you have when you were growing up as a kid? Well, I was pretty much like every other kid of my generation back then. Uh, I collected the uh, Hasbro. Or at the time, actually, it's not Hasbro. Uh, back then, it was Kenner. Uh, I collected the Kenner toys, and my mom and dad bought me um, a set of uh, figures that first Christmas. I think it was 78, because 77, they didn't have them available. Um, so I started getting the action figures, and then some of the vehicles. My first major vehicle slash playset was the Death Star, uh, which was amazing. Received that at Christmas, turned the corner from the hallway, Christmas morning and saw it sitting on our living room table. It was amazing. Uh, then Empire Strikes Back, the AT-AT was my most prized thing, um, and I still have that. And then Return of the Jedi, probably um, the most memorable toy was the Imperial Shuttle, which to my memory was probably the largest uh, vehicle that, um, that they made uh, back in those days, just because of the wingspans uh, of the... Um, of the shuttle, and then um, and then the Y wing. I loved the Y wing. Uh, the fact that it took them three movies to actually make one, but uh, I was kind of glad they did because they actually uh, really seems like they put a lot of great detail into that. Um, so I, to me, it was just a, one of the better fighter vehicles that they had. Uh, and then um, probably my most prized possession that I still own today is my very first action figure, my very first Star Wars toy, which was 
uh, R2-D2, and I still have him. So this is maybe a tough one. What's your favorite Star Wars film? And what's your favorite soundtrack from a Star Wars film? First question is easy to answer. That's The Empire Strikes Back. Always is my favorite. Uh, the second one, the soundtrack question, that one can be harder, uh, but I'm just going to give the prequels some love uh, in my answers and just say that Revenge of the Sith uh, is one of the most beautiful and perfect soundtracks ever made um, by John Williams. Um, he is a master at weaving in previous uh, themes, and he does a great job with this one, and all I can say is Battle of the Heroes. How did you get into drawing and um, how did this lead into you getting work for Topps uh, Trading Cards? Okay, so just like many people my age, um, you know, growing up watching Star Wars since the age of three or four, uh, three and four, somewhere around there, um, I've been drawing Star Wars since then. And uh, for me, uh, Star Wars has just always been there. So, um, I used to love drawing growing up, and when I got into uh, middle school age, um, which is around my early teens, uh, I decided that I wanted to be a comic book artist. And uh, so, as I pursued that, I began um, I began learning um, how to draw, um, and then uh, I picked up a guitar, and that totally changed my trajectory in my life, and got involved in music. And then a few years ago, uh, a friend of mine. I've, I had just become acquaintances with, we, we began to talk and uh, I learned that he, as an artist, that um, was a part of the Batman animated TV show back in the 90s and he helped create um, Harley Quinn and characters like that and uh, he was actually doing work for Topps Trading Cards for Star Wars and I told him, I said, dude, I said, you are doing exactly what, uh, what I was pursuing uh, growing up as a kid and he said, you know what? How would you like to be able to say that you uh, helped design an officially approved Lucasfilm trading card, a sketch card? And I was like, well, that'd be amazing. So uh, basically, it really, you know, he was very generous and very kind. He let me pick a scene for the Revenge of the Sith set back, I don't know, um, in 2015. And uh, so I picked a scene and he drew it and uh, I drew it out and then he redrew it and uh, it got approved and so it was the scene of obi-wan from revenge of the sith jumping down and challenging general grievous he says hello there and he puts his fingers out like this with his lightsaber lit so anyway one of my favorite scenes um and so once i did that he saw my work and he encouraged me and told me hey man you know you you're not so bad you could actually i think if you spent some time drawing every day and working on this stuff i think you'll be able to uh get together a portfolio here after a year or so and um, submit it and see if you can get approved to actually do work for uh, tops so with no help of, to him I mean he he didn't put his put my name in or anything like that he just gave me instructions and and really helped me uh, tweak my art style and I started posting stuff on Instagram as I was working on it and then people uh, people were asking me how much how much for that and um, so I thought, well, maybe I'm ready. If people are willing to spend money on, on my artwork, maybe I'm ready to, to see if I can make this thing happen. So put a portfolio together, sent it off to Topps uh, Trading Cards, and got an invite to the Rogue One series, um, series one, uh, when that film came out in 2016. So since then, I've been doing Star Wars Topps cards since then. I've also done a lot of work for Upper Deck. Um, so uh, Marvel and Star Wars is is where uh, where I was... Uh, where I was hoping I could I could uh, one day do so I'm now doing both which is awesome So apart from your amazing Star Wars tops trading cards, what other properties have you actually worked on where you've drawn sketch cards for? The very first project I was a part of that I was asked to be on was for upper deck it was for uh, clerks a very random request I never thought I'd ever be drawing trading cards for clerks uh, the movie from 1994. Uh, then I've done, uh, I did one season of The Walking Dead, and then I did two, season one and two of Stranger Things, and also uh, several Marvel sets from Upper Deck, and I continue to do Marvel. Uh, my greatest joy in uh, drawing is stuff from Star Wars and Marvel. 
So what trading card project that you've worked on are you most proud of? What's your best ever trading card set? Man, Jules, what a great question. Um, I would probably say for me, the most um, satisfying and rewarding experience was being a part of the 2018 Topps Galaxy set, where I actually had a base card uh, inserted into the set. Uh, and this particular set was something I was fond of for years since the uh, first series back in 1993, I believe. So uh, I am card number six, uh, United Behind Grievous. Uh, so that was a, a pretty, pretty awesome thing for me uh, as an artist to be part of. So you've just started your new YouTube channel. Do you have any intention to do uh, some like live drawings of your tops uh, Star Wars sketch cards so you can show us how you would put one together? I do actually plan to uh, release more drawing videos when I have time. Uh, one of the aspects of um, doing trading cards for tops is that you really can't share uh, the work as you're going. Uh, so you have to wait till, um, till the cards are actually on store shelves before you can actually share your work. Uh, but I do have a few videos, a couple of videos um, that are up and available for public viewing um, on my YouTube channel right now, where I show you um, some, some of my work that I've done on previous sets. Uh, and if you're a Patreon uh, exclusive um, member to my Patreon, then you actually get uh, some preview stuff um, as well. But if you visit my YouTube channel, you can find uh, some of the work that I've done for previous uh, sketch cards with tops. Are you allowed to tell us what you're working on at the moment? There are two products that uh, Tops will be releasing soon that I just wrapped up probably in May and early June, uh, late June, uh, which was the Star Wars Chrome Legacy and also the uh, Skywalker Saga set. Not sure when that comes out, but I believe one of those is releasing on August 7th, 2019. And I'm currently on my desk. I have two Star Wars products. Uh, one is the masterwork set which should release i believe sometime oh, i can't even say i don't even know but it's the 2019 set and then uh the other one that i have on my desk is the um, journey to rise of skywalker and i also have two products on my desk that i am currently trying to work on which are for upper deck entertainment uh, for the marvel uh, marvel license and finally if you could be any Star Wars character in the entire Star Wars universe, which one would it be and why? Now, this is a deceiving question because the answer can seem obvious. Uh, but in reality, if you think too deeply about your uh, choice, you'll find that there are not many Star Wars characters uh, in the uh, upper echelon or in, uh, you know, main characters that don't go through some pretty heavy trials um, to come out on the other side, either more refined or as failures. So uh, so the easy, quick answer that I would give is Han Solo, uh, simply because of his suave, um, uh, confident nature. Um, I love his story arc. I enjoy, um, I enjoy his story arc from the original trilogy. Um, then, you know, sometimes I think about, I think about that. I'm like, man, I sure wouldn't want to be frozen in carbonite. Yeesh. Um, and then I wouldn't want to end up being, uh, on the other end of a, a, uh, lightsaber that my son shoved through my heart, uh, descending into a chasm of Starkiller base. That does not sound like a beautiful ending. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, Han Solo is my, is my first answer. And then I would go with uh, probably one of the Jedi, uh, either Obi-Wan or Qui-Gon Jinn, both of whom were noble, uh, had their own, had some issues, but, um, um, but ultimately I think Qui-Gon was the Jedi who was shown to be right in his pursuit of living by the living force. So I think that's my answer. Han Solo, side note, uh, Obi-Wan or... Um, Qui-Gon Jinn. All right, well, huge thanks to Jules for both answering my questions over on his channel and then sending questions to me so I could answer over here. So hopefully you as a viewer have enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about myself. And um, if you go over to Jules' channel over at Jules Burt, 
on YouTube, you will uh, find out about himself. So uh, Jules and I have been uh, friends on the Instagram for uh, about three or four years now. And you can check his Instagram account at uh, Vintage Star Wars A Day. So thanks so much for watching. And if you've got questions or you've got comments, please drop them. And uh, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And then also, please go say hi to Jules over on his channel and consider subscribing. Some awesome, fantastic content that I think you'll enjoy. Thanks again for watching.